Guten Tag, mes amis. Wie geht's? C'est moi, Dita, Yves Medita. Is this a... This video is a... You can't make this stuff up. So I'll explain it to you and my captive audience. There she is. And my six or nine loyal viewers. So Dita's feeling good today. He'll tell you why. So he's going to have a... His limonata probably full of dangerous chemicals. Anyway, morning lemonade or coffee with Dita. So, Dita's gonna fill you in on what happened with his driving test a uh, couple weeks ago. They failed me. So I'm going to tell you what happened. So, I go there and I can tell I could tell I was going to be failed before this asshole even got in the car. Um, he came out. He goes, my name's Mike. Um, then before we even get out of the parking lot, there's, a, there's another driving instructor in front of us with a young uh, woman, maybe 18, 19 years old, in the car. And they're not moving. So this, my instructor, my tester, tells me to honk the horn. So... I go, I'm thinking, you know, you're not supposed to uh, make conversation with these guys. So I'm going, hmm, this doesn't seem right. Uh, they're going to move. So I honk the horn. So then go, snaps at me, hit it again. So I honk the horn again. Hit it again. Honk the horn again. They go, pull, 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 pull alongside. So I pull alongside, he rolls his window down. He goes, what the hell's your problem? You're not supposed to be... Uh, teaching driving in the, in the parking lot. Uh, so he berates these people. Then he goes, drive. So I pull out, and they're repaving this section before, in the town where I was taking it, they're repaving this section right before the on-ramp to the, the 403, which is a major highway. So there's all these guys, and there's construction workers there, and it's a hot day. It's in the, in the afternoon around 2 o'clock. And there's these signs posted, men at work, 40 kilometers. So I go, drive 40 kilometers. He goes, why are you driving so slow? Don't say anything. So then we get to the highway, and uh, in the collector lane, there's a semi-trailer in front of me going about 80, 85K. So you're supposed to only do things when the instructor tells you to do things, right? So he didn't tell me to change lanes, so I'm in the slow lane following a safe distance behind the semi-trailer. He's like all fidgety and he's got this iPad clipboard kind of like what they use in the NFL and he's looking out the right window. So he goes, change lanes. So I check my blind spot and there's a car coming up, coming up beside us in the left, left hand lane. So it's not safe to make a lane change. So because I accelerated when he said to change lanes, which you normally do, now I'm, cl too, now I'm getting too close to the semi. So I slow down, let this car pass, then I changed lanes. He goes, what are you slowing down for? Anyway, the car that passed us, there's an, another semi in front of that semi. But by the time this guy looks at what he's doing, this, this car had turned into the right lane. So you couldn't see it anymore. He goes, there's no car there. So he says, yeah, you don't know what you're doing. So then he makes me go off on the, uh, on the first exit. It's supposed to be a half hour test. Then he makes me go off on the first exit and then when you have these, these, uh, these off-ramps, the speed goes from 100 to 80 to 60 to 40. And you, you're supposed to have like, you know, 15 seconds to slow, down, to slow down to get down. Then he yells at me, now you're going too fast! And I'm going 45 kilometers an hour. So anyway, we drive back to the thing. And then, and then he says, you're obviously too inexperienced and too timid. This is what he says to me. You don't know what you're doing. You need to be tested again. Then he goes out to have a smoke. And I tried to explain to him that the reason I needed to be retested, and this is a true story, is that uh, I used to live in Stratford on, a, on the main highway, and I had one of those rural mailboxes. And three years in a row, the snowplow came by, took out, took out the box. And my birthday is in February, so I usually get my renewals for my insurance and license in uh in late November or early December. Well, I didn't get it for three years and I knew my license was about to expire. So I had to write and call the Ministry of Transpor 
transportation three times because they didn't believe me. I said, no, no, it's true. I said, I live on a rural route and the snow plow has taken them out. That must have been what happened to them. And I can't, I'm not going to go in a, a, a snow field uh, like a, th a thousand acres, someone's farm looking for a, a, a piece of mail that's probably been waterlogged because those snow plows come by at about 50 miles an hour and they, they just take it out. So that's the true story. So that's why I had to be retested. So, um, you know, I was, I was going to let it go, but I, I felt like I knew before he sat in the car, even got in the car that he was going to fail me. And I think it's because of my age. So um, I said, as he was leaving, he lit up a smoke. I said, you know, I just have to say something. I said, I've been driving for over 50 years without any problems. I said, over a million kilometers. And then he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard it all before. That's, that's why you need to be, that's why you're taking your test now. I said, you know what, excuse me. I said, you're a first class asshole and I'm gonna file a complaint, which I did. So I get this letter uh, from them last week and here it is. Notice under the Trespass to Property Act. So be, without even talking to me, they, they decided, it has been brought to my attention that on September 13th, you attended our Brantford Drive Test Center, at which time you conducted yourself in an unprofessional and inappropriate manner. As a result of your actions, you are hereby notified, pursuant to the Ontario Trespass to Property Act, RSO 1990, Chapter T21, that your presence at all drive test examiner centers is not welcome. So how am I supposed to get my license back? So they leave, they leave me um, a... Uh, uh, an email. So I contact them via email and I sent them a long, long thing explaining that no one has bothered to interview me. And I call, then I get a number saying, this is the supervisor, call me. Call them three times, don't get a response. So what I did last night, one good thing about being communauto, I have 37 monthly statements. There you are, 37. Uh, from the last 37 months in which I have spent 9,697 dollars and 30 cents on 12 different vehicles and the nice thing about the communauto they tell you what type of vehicle it has whether you got a ticket whether you, uh, you sustained any damage were in an accident and they tell you what kind of car or vehicle you have so I've had 178 trips in the last uh, 37 months with 12 different vehicles, including compacts, SUVs, sedans, pickup trucks, and vans. I've been to Algonquin Park, Big Bear Park, Simcoe, Toronto, Perry Sound, Owen Sound, Lake Simcoe, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Lake Huron, London, Stratford, Belleville, St. Catharines, Niagara Falls, Kitchener, Guelph, Cambridge, Oswegan, Lions Head, Peterborough, St. Mary's, Tilsonburg, Port Dover, Fort Erie, Cleveland, Ohio, Buffalo, New York, Goderich, Brantford, Oakville, Caledon, Aaron, Barry, and Collingwood, and I've driven 90% of those miles on highways 400, 27, 427, 401, 403, QEW, 96, 99, 28, 6, 10, 8, 21, 23, 7, 87, 11, and 38. So at 12 o'clock in the morning last night, I text, I, I photographed all of these receipts, okay? And this is what I love about Communauto. It says, for the period, for example, 1st, of, 1st to 30th of September, vehicle number 105, 4930, 4930, 4930. Start date, end date, number of days, number of hours, total cost, number of kilometers, distance cost, booking fee, fees and credits, uh, and everything else. So do you, I, I sent them 12 emails saying, and then I said, uh, I said, how much driving experience do I need? <clears throat> so guess what? I got a phone call today. A very nice, pleasant lady who's a, a supervisor. She said she apologized for not getting back to me. I think it's because I threatened them with legal action. Uh, and, sa and said, uh, I'm sorry to hear about your experience. I'd like to hear your side of it. So I said, did you get my emails? And she said, yes, but she hadn't read them. So I basically gave her a, an overview, like I just did to you guys. So I'm really sorry to hear about that. 
So I said, tell you what, uh, to make this right, I will retest you personally. Where would you like to be tested, in Hamilton or Simcoe? I said Simcoe, it's a little town, it's a nice little drive. And so she is going to retest me for free, the supervisor, on the 18th. Um, so, you know, but she did, she, 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 she said, she asked me, so I said, you know, when something like this happens, I said, I wish I, I would have recorded it, but they don't allow you to record these things. I wonder why. Because I said, this guy just had something against me because of my age and or whatever. He was in a bad mood. He wasn't paying attention. He shouldn't have been testing that day for whatever reason, giving him the benefit of the doubt. So she said, uh, you know, she said, well, there's just one thing I have to ask you. She said, did you call him any names? And I said, yeah. I said, uh, I, I tried to explain exactly what I explained to you and he was having none of it. So I said, you know, you're a first class asshole and I'm going to follow the complaint. And I, she almost laughed, but I think she wanted to, to see who was really telling the truth. So I said, you know, her name was Amanda. I said, Amanda, I said, uh, you know, in situations like this where you're not allowed to record, I said, you have to decide who's telling the truth. There's, there's two sides to the story and usually the truth is somewhere in the middle. So I said, I said, do you really think someone that's driven over almost 16,000 kilometers in the last 37 months and has driven vehicles uh, on average four times a week ha uh, on major highways, and I'm retired, I said, these are recreational miles, so I'm not uh, doing the same 10 or 20 minute route every day to work, to and from work. I said, I've driven all over Southern Ontario and been to the United States twice. So do you really think that's indicative of someone who doesn't know how to drive on a highway? So anyway, you can't make this shit up, these me. So sometimes you have to stick up for yourself. And lo and behold, <clears throat> you know how I like to diss on millennials sometimes. It was a millennial. Yeah. And you know, you know, the, 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 it's $96 and it's supposed to be a 20 minute to half hour test. I was out there for four minutes and uh, the guy wasn't doing his job. Now, I, I don't want him to be fired necessarily, but I, I was very polite to her and I said, who do you think's telling the truth here, right? I said, I just wanted a fair test. So I'm pretty sure on the 18th, I will get a fair test and I will get my driver's license. Okay? Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Happy plucking, Maze Me. And seriously, you can't make this shit up. Vita Zan.